Hello and welcome back to my FM Live. Well, it's been a while since I've said that, so let me tell you. But today is hopefully what's going to be a comeback for my channel. So today we've got a video on mentoring, and it's been in the game for, I want to say about two, three years. I think it was FM 18 it was introduced, and it essentially replaced tutoring, which is very similar in the essence, but it's a lot harder to achieve the, the final goal. So today we'll be having a look at exactly why we mentor a player and exactly what it does affect when uh, when we're playing the game. And we'll be having a look at what the game looks for uh, when we're picking a mentor. So and we'll be going through a couple of examples or main examples that I, that I use. We're going through that at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. So I think I've got a kind of unique a unique way of looking at things and a unique way of doing things uh, when it comes to mentoring. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but let's get straight into the video. So why do we mentor a player? So what we want to see is this right here. So we want a lot of players in the first team for, in the first team side with perfectionists. We want model professionals, professional um, personalities. So these personalities are made up of hidden attributes. Well, most of them are hidden attributes in behind the scenes, which we don't actually see. So those the, well, the main three ones that we want to look out for is the professionalism, his ambition, and his determination, which we can see obviously throughout the player attributes. So the main reason why we want to look out for those three attributes is because they will help that player develop as fast as possible. So if you have a young prospect at the club, a five five star potential player, he may not reach that five star potential because he doesn't have the professionalism, he doesn't have that determination or the ambition of his other players to reach his highest potential. So with all those combined, that will give you a good personality, which is what we're looking for, what we're looking to achieve. That will give you the best chance of that player reaching that potential. So that is in an essence why we do mental players. So. The other thing it does do, which a lot of people don't look at too much, is pass on player traits. So if you have a look at, say for an example, Shane Long, these player traits that you see right there in the corner of his attributes are player traits. So get get for, uh, forward for whenever possible. He's going to try to do that regardless of the tactic he's playing instruction. He's going to be trying to do that or look for certain scenarios where he will inject his player traits. So they do pass on to the players you're mentoring. Just got to look out for... Um, per player traits that are not exactly desirable. Um, it depending on what position you're playing uh, for a certain player. So you just got to keep that in mind when you are picking that group. All right, so the main things we want to look out for when we're choosing a player to be mentored is the potential age of that player. So normally it will work a lot better if the player is a lot younger. Now, in saying that, it will you can pass on uh, personality attributes or player traits in older players. However, it is less likely to happen over a short period of time, or to be honest, even a long period of time. So, it is very unlikely that 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 you will pass on any player um, uh, attributes, be it you know the personality attributes or player traits. So, just keep that in mind. We're trying to get those younger hot prospects at the club. To, to reach their potential here. So that's the main goal. Um, also, it will take into effect your uh, the, the career first team football that the potential influence player has. So if the player is at, a, at 20 years of age, but he has you know a fair few games up his sleeve in first team football, that won't have as much an effect as well. So we want to really look out for those young, young players um, wherever possible. The other thing to look out for is the player hierarchy. So over in the dynamics, um, we have a look at the player hierarchy. So from the top to the bottom, you've got team leaders, highly influential, influential players, and then other players. So obviously, the most inf influential players are going to be your team leaders. The ones are going to be influenced the most are going to be maybe influenced players or your other players. One of the other things that can take effect is their social group standing uh, between the two players. So for an example, if we have a look at Danny Ings, he is going to gel well or gel better with um, Adams there. So we know that them uh, those two together in a group would work a little bit better than, say, Walker Peters, which is not in that same social group. Um, it doesn't take a, a really bit of effect, and you can possibly pull one of those players into that core social group or a different social group, but that will take an effect. So if you want a quicker gain, you might want to have a look at playing or, or mentoring a player that's in the same social group. All right, last but not least, in the training, you have a look at your units. So with, within the units of your training, you have your attacking, defending, and goalkeeping. So within that attacking unit, obviously, they're going to take, uh, if they're in the same unit, that's going to have a greater effect, and vice versa with defensive units. So 
These are all things you want to keep in mind. So once again, we'll go over that, the age of the potential influence player, the career, the career time football appearances of that potential influence player. Um, also, the difference in the club hierarchy and uh, the social groups that the, the two players are in or the three players or four players. We'll get into that in a second. And also the training units they are uh, assigned to. All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video. Uh, this is how I choose my group. So once again, you can have, uh, you choose a different name, whatever you want. I have because I want to have a look at the two different units. I'll have a defensive unit. Um, so we'll just pick one. Uh, we'll add another group and I'll have the attacking unit. So we have the two different units. And what I'll do is go over to uh, add a player, just sort that. Um, and then have a look at everyone that could possible that will that is in the defensive unit that there might be a couple of players isn't that's not you can ch uh, chop and change as you please um add all, all those players now we'll get to the why this is a bad idea to leave all those players in there in a second um go over to the second group and then basically the rest of the players the goalkeepers typically i don't choose or i don't really have a look at for uh fraser foster he's a model professional so you might want to have a look at have him in a, his own separate group tutoring now goalkeepers in their own kind of category in terms of their training unit um, it's they're not going to obviously pass on ppms but they will pass on those personality attributes so he might be one goalkeeper there that i will get him to tutor a lot of uh, a couple other players uh, I, i've found it rare that i have a good uh, mentoring goalkeeper uh, at this club southampton at the moment they do so he's a player we'll probably use but i won't use him, him as an example in this video all right, so as we talked about, um, it's all laid out there for you um, as in terms of what's important to mentor a player. The squad hierarchy, the social groups, his age, his personality, uh, his estimated influence on the group and his estimated effect from the group. So this is just our defensive group. So what I do for my groups of players, I want three, maybe maximum four players to be in one group. So if you have that major or that main player, that that guy that's going to give the most influence over the group, you want him to spend as not little as time as possible, but you don't want his time shared too evenly across five, six, seven players. You want him to have the greatest effect over a couple of players. Now, remember that you can, you know, for mentoring for me, I change it every six months. So it might be something you look at every six months, maybe take away a player, add another player. Um, but it's something you need to keep on coming back to. Um, and I would look, leave myself a little notes um, in uh, I'll show you how to do it now. Just leave myself a little note in there and just create a note for a certain date to come back, have a look at your mentoring. Um, and if you need to change something or if you're having a look at, or keep it, keep track of their personalities, of their determination, see if it has improved. If it hasn't and you haven't really noticed any uh, change, get rid of them out of the group. Maybe it's not working for some reason or another um, and choose someone else. So as I said, we want about three, maybe four players uh, in a group itself. Um, I'm not going to narrow down all of these. So let's concentrate, say, for example, on attacking. So if, with the uh, estimated influence group, uh, influence, play, uh, influence players, we have two there, with, which are significant, which is going to give us the greatest effect. Um, both team leaders, Shane Long and Danny Ings, um, both really good personalities as well, professional and resolute. So they're two guys that we might we might have to split up this group. I'm not entirely sure. Um, what we then do is have a look at the effects on the group or what effect they're going to get from the group. So if we have a look at um, the top guy here, he's going to have a significant effect. Uh, the bottom guy there as well, small bone. What a name. Um, he is going to ha also have a significant effect as well. So they're two guys we know we're going to have in there. And then we start getting rid of some of the players like this guy. He's, he's a balanced personality. He's only going to have a light influence out of squad, maybe an average um, kind of effect. He might be a guy that we want to leave in, but I've, I've already, I think I've narrowed down those two. I'm, as I said, I might split up this attacking unit. You never know. Um, so we, for the moment, get rid of him. We'll have a look at Theo Wilcott, fairly professional, he's going to average, has, have an average. Um, we've already got a, a better tutor there, or a better mentor, sorry, and then we're going to get rid of him. So we'll just narrow, I'm just going to narrow this down off camera, and then come back and explain my uh, reasoning. All right, so I've narrowed it down, and we've got the Denny Ings uh, in charge of that first attacking group. Like I said to you before, I might have split up the, the, the second group, and I have. So I'll put Shane Long in another group, Resolute Personality. It's not as good as professionalism or professional. I can't remember why there's one 
um, there's one attribute there that I, I just can't remember. Professional is the little bit better um, personality than Resolute. Um, so yeah, Denny Ings with that main group, he's the significant effects. So I'm looking to have this group that balanced personality to really be affected. Um, we've got the next group, so the next attacking group, uh, Shane Long, significant still. We've got one guy that's on uh, average, so he might have an influence over the other players. Um, which, uh, yeah, you might, I might keep my eye on that and just see if he does have a negative impact. Um, at the moment, we can see this guy here has 12 determination and uh, 14, so it can't be too bad. It can't be too bad, So, but I'd look at that um, as well. Um, same same type of thing as what I'll do for the defensive unit. I'll just narrow that down just to make sure I've got the right players in there. Um, so that is essentially how I mentor players. Bring everyone in from the group. Just have a look at who has the greatest effect on the group, who has who is going to gain the most from the group, um, and then I'll go with that. If I need to split up the pairs, if I don't think there's a group in there at all, um, I just won't mentor players at all. The last thing that I want to touch on is you actually can set up groups within your under-23s and under-18s. Now, you can't mentor, or you can if you do move the, the players up to the first team, but you can not You can only mentor within the first team, within the under-23s, and then within the under-18s. If you, say for example, you see a player that has very high potential in a save like this guy here, I would definitely move him right up to the first team, if I'm honest, because he looks like um, he's pretty much ready to go, a couple of cup games. Um, so 18 years of age, as well you can probably get a couple of games good personality i would move him straight up but regardless of that with the other guys we can see you know within the squad there is a couple of decent personalities so that which we can pass on we've got harry lewis he's a goalkeeper i'd worry about look at his professionalism um or he's it is professional personality so he has potential to pass on some of those attributes to some of the other younger players that are not quite quite ready so we if we do pass on um, his personality to another player which is only a two two and a half three star player probably not ready for your team he can then reach his potential faster and then maybe you can sell him off if he's not good enough for your team you can sell him off and make a higher profit because he's reached his potential faster if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, have a look at mentoring players within these groups as well. It can uh, give you an advantage, uh, especially in the transfer market. And maybe there is a player that you just missed out, maybe it's a three star, maybe it turns into a four star or five star um, that you can use later on down the track. All right, guys, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video and um, hopefully there's more to come. Hopefully I'll pull my finger out and get some more tips and tricks videos just like this uh, come to you. I'm not going to promise anything. I was just about to say, maybe two videos, for, you know, one video a week. I'm not going to promise anything. I'll just try to get some videos done when I can, when I've got a free minute. Um, I'll try to get some videos done. I really enjoy do making videos for you guys and, uh, you know, I enjoy reading the comments and I enjoy the interactions. Uh, I need to talk to someone. Um, uh, all right, guys, I will hopefully see you next time.